Okay, welcome back. This is part three of uh, lighting a scene, a nighttime scene. And we just rendered our first render with uh, setting up our lampshade, um, getting our light bulb set up, prepped for the scene, and then prepping the shader for transmission so we can see through. So the lamp looks like a lamp. Okay, and lampshade looks like a lampshade. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the process now that we got a, our first render. What I want you guys to start doing, uh, not to use, do not use the Arnold Preview Render. You could, but I recommend not doing it. I recommend that you actually create a real render. Okay. So um, anyway, so the next uh, thing we're going to do is we are going to set up our other lights. So let's go ahead and look at our other lights and get those set up. So position is everything. So if you have a table in your scene that's illuminated by a light, minus my lights are all canned lights, okay? So it's really important that we understand that that is usually a spotlight. So you would go into create uh, lights and then spotlight, okay? And um, for this light, I've got it directly over the uh, my table, okay? So normally in a, a situation like this, you usually have lights that are over top of areas that you want to illuminate. So you either have a hanging light and you'll have to deal with that. You can use uh, point lights uh, on top of that. You can use the same kind of scenario with using a... Uh, a light bulb and adding the, the texture to it or the shader to it. But right now I'm, I'm using lights you don't see. Uh, they're coming from the ceiling, okay? So I have a light over this picture and I have another light over this picture. So you can start adding. I usually add one light at a time and then set it up that way. So I would highly recommend that you do that. You add one light at a time, see how that looks, tweak it out, and then go to the next light, okay? Because if you put a bunch of lights in your scene, you don't know what you're doing and, and you don't know how, to, how you're illuminating your scene. So I highly recommend that you do one light at a time, get it tweaked out. So let's just go to this one. I'm going to turn this one on, Illuminous by default. This light here, it's important that you understand <coughs> point lights have cone angles, okay? <coughs> the best way to describe a cone angle and a penumbra angle is if you have a cone angle at 40 and a penumbra angle at zero, you're going to have a very sharp light. Look up here. You get a sample up here. You see right here, I'm circling it, sample, and then there's a light shape. So I've turned this angle down to zero. That's what it looks like. So you're going to get a really, really hot, sharp line. That's not natural, okay, in real life. So you need a penumbra angle to match that so it spreads out more, so it looks more natural, okay? It kind of diffuses out, right? That's, how, that's the best way to, to, uh, to say it. And <clears throat> intensity is high. Intensity is at four, okay? That's a, high, that's a very bright light, all right? So uh, we want a decay rate. At this point, we want a decay rate um, it comes in at no, no decay. What that means is that the light will shine on forever. It doesn't, it doesn't have a decay rate. That is also not correct because everything, every light has a certain, uh, it can go so far. It depends on the intensity of the light. Um, they call that luminance, okay? So if I have an intensity at uh, a lumens of 120, that's a normal bike light. That means that it will only shine probably uh, probably about 25 feet in front of you, okay? Depending on how clear the night is, okay? So um, lights are important to understand that a decay rate of of, of uh, it has to have a linear decay rate. What that means is that at a certain distance it becomes less bright, and that's normal. So in my scene that you see here, okay? This light is now illumining this area here. It is subtle, but what's happening is it's also giving me some beautiful highlights on the chairs. 
If you don't have a light above your dining table, uh, you're going to have some issues because you want to illuminate that area of your scene. Okay? All right? So, whether it's a physical lighting, lighting you can't see right here, you can't see my ceiling, that's where my, all my lights are, that's fine. I don't have to see your lights. But if you do have something hanging down, you got to make sure that you do all the prep work that you did for this light here, for the lamp light. Okay? Just remember that. So every light that I add, okay, will start adding to my scene. So I've got that set up. And let's go into Arnold. The same thing with Arnold, okay. So under Arnold, with that light, I've got use color temperature. I've got it set at 5700, exposure at 4, samples at 1, uh, radius at 0, um, these are these are these are things I'm not too worried about because you really can't see if you have if you have a really terrible looking shadow you're gonna have to turn that up to two or three okay it will slow your render down though I didn't have that problem so I have it at one normalizes on roundness just keep it one you want it to cast shadows of course shadow density again we've talked about that Aspect ratio for a uh, spotlight is a little different. So we're going to keep that at 1, lens radius at 0. Everything else is pretty much defaulted. Okay? So these are, those are the only changes I made there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through these lights a little bit faster now. Okay, so I'm going to go into my bookmarks. And you can see all my bookmarks here. So go back to where I was. So how do you set a bookmark? Well, if you get an image that you really like, okay, if you like a, that camera angle that you set up, and you want to go to that every single time, then you would go to View, go to Bookmarks, okay, Edit Bookmarks. Okay, I've got so many in here. Edit Bookmarks. And then you go into click on New Bookmark, and let's say uh, Favorite. Cam one or something like camera one, you can do that. And then um, then what you want to do is hit enter, and then you want to apply it, and then close. And then if I scroll out and I go to view bookmarks, I can go back to favorite cam one. There we go. So that, that's a nice way to bookmark things. So I've got all the lights turned off except for the uh, light over the table, and we'll do a quick render on here. Again, I'll probably change this. And the thing is, I think my render disappeared again. I don't know how. Somehow it just disappears. So my render is working. I'm not sure where it is. It's, it's rendering in the background. Is it? Uh, that's, yeah. We'll see where it is. Somehow I, I get placed. We'll see what happens here. There we go. So now you can see I've got my uh, renders happening right here in that area. So now that fills in that area. I'm not sure I missed, I missed that light above that picture. But now it's filling up that area back in the corner, so we've got some nice illumination on the walls there. You can see what it looks like before and after. So you can see if I put that object in before, uh, see if I must not have done that accidentally. Okay, so so um, you can go from what you had before and what you're seeing now. I'm going to turn all the lights on now. I'm going to show you what I did for the. For the for the lights for the actual pictures okay and then you can just kind of experiment with the rest of the light so the next light for the pictures I did a little bit something a little bit different so with uh, I'm going to illuminate that light here and you can see that um, that we've got a cone angle at 20 that's a lot more narrow and I've got a higher penumbra angle at 30 on that one I do have decay rate at uh, linear, and I've got it a lot less intense, one on that one. 
So, and then when I go to Arnold, I've got it set up uh, to the exposure of two, samples at one, and then you guys can see the rest of my numbers here. Okay, all the way down. Okay, so everything else is default with that. And I'll go through all my lights here. That's the same. I basically duplicated that light over to this other uh, light. And I also did another duplicate over to here. So if I like what my lights have, are doing, then I go ahead and just duplicate them around. Okay. Now, one uh, in particular light, uh, I had to have a fill light here. It was too dark in that area, so I had another spotlight in there. And you can see that I have it set up kind of like what I had this one set up. Okay. So you can see I've got a, a really soft light. And I got that intensity set at 4. Um, it's a linear decay, 40 and 40, basically the exact same light as this one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Illuminates by default on that one. So I'm going to just kind of turn these all on. And some intensities are different than others, but they're all about the same. And then I have the, the, the front room uh, fill light in here, um, basically filling the entire area up here. And its cone angle is at 60 and penumbra angle at 40. Now you can change that. Basically, the cone angle is how the light spreads. Okay. Let me give you an example. So if I want to look through that light, I can go to Renderer, Panels, Look Through Selected. I haven't shown you that in anything, so Look Through to Selected. And it shows you my, uh, <coughs> excuse me, my cone angle. Okay, so it's basically lighting up my sofa, my rug, and everything around it. <coughs> excuse me. And my penumbra angle is the outside, so I've got diffusion between here and here. Okay, I've got a linear setup, and I also have the color temperature on and my exposure. This is the, the one of the most important ones here. It's, I got it set at five. And everything else you can see how I got it set up. Okay. Basically default. Okay. And the more lights you, if you have a large room like I have and you have dark areas, this is how you would set those up. How do you get back again? Just go to perspective, perspective, and then I can go into view, um, bookmarks, and go back to my favorite cam. And then I can give you a render like I have uh, for the, my finished piece. And that's, um, that's because of, um, here, look, right here, shadow density. So if that shadow is too dark underneath the chair, that's coming from the lamp light. So I'd select the lamp light and turn the shadow density down, right? And that would give me a lighter shadow. Now, be careful with that. That tends to make things look weird and not realistic. And, I don't, you know, you're going to have some dark shadows, especially in a room that doesn't have any light coming through the windows. Now, the last thing I need to do, okay, running out of time, is we need to turn that uh, back on, this back on. So make sure you turn that back on by turning the intensity back. So I think that I had the intensity of the background at 0.3. It's going to come in at 1, okay? So you can start with that. It may be really intense in exposure, right? Exposure set that, once that's set up. Now it's going to be slow when you change these things because the amount, the resolution I have this, this guy at, okay? So 1 and 1 on that. Let's go back in. We'll do one more render. I ran out of time, so... Once that gets set up, I'll go back in here, get my viewport set up, and do one more render. Okay? And then you tweak it out from there. I think I ended up with an intensity of 0.3 on here. And then I had a exposure setting at 0.5, something like that, for my final render. And then, of course, you can see what my final render looks like. And voila, that's it. Okay, happy rendering.